So just briefly going over my build. I've been playing New World. I'm only level 35, almost 36. But I've kind of settled on a build that I really do like. I tried a couple of different variations, and this is pretty much what I wanted to work with. I usually like the brawler type of build, and I tried doing the mage route, I tried spear, but some of the builds felt kind of limiting in the way of my particular playstyle. So I typically like either heavy armor or more brawler type playstyles, and so I kind of settled eventually on going with the, uh, the Warhammer for basically my main weapon. So looking at the tree, currently I have 106 going into strength. Uh, the the hammer is a strength based as a strength based weapon, and I decided to focus primarily going the route of the juggernaut. And of course, you're going to take all the passives up until here. So for this particular build, we're going to put three points, three points into armor breaker. And that's basically going to be one of the initiating abilities. Um, it has a relatively short cooldown, especially if you can get anything that gives you uh, any, any sort of cooldown reduction, which you'll probably come across. There's 140% of weapon damage, adds grit with two points. And then for your third point, which is where you're going to stop, you're going to stop at lasting trauma, which basically gives you uh, armor breaker grants, uh, targets rend, reducing damage absorption, absorption by 15% for 10 seconds so that's basically going to give you like a little bit of an armor debuff and as well as taking the epitome of bunk which is a funny name it says increase armor penetration by 10 percent for all warhammer standard attacks so that's basically going to be a 10 percent armor pen on all of your left click and heavy attacks all right so these are your standard attacks so that's basically going to give you 10 percent armor penetration uh, on on that on all of those swings now the next thing which is basically mighty gavel mighty gavel has a very long cooldown and this is basically your bread and butter uh, and especially if you go all the way down the chain it's going to give you sort of a little bit of a pseudo execute so you're going to go all the way down to the very end it deals 160 percent uh, weapon damage and then of course um, targets under 30 percent take increased damage increased damage done by mighty gavel attack for targets under 30% take an additional 20% as well as increase uh, stamina damage so for individuals and maybe if the person blocks it this is increases stamina damage done by mighty gavel attack by 25% so typically your normal attacks when your opponent is blocking maybe you're fighting against a sword and shield so the warhammer is basically the counter for someone who is utilizing a sword and shield after a successful mighty gavel attack gain haste increasing movement speed so it'll allow you give you a couple of seconds to be able to stay in range to do some follow attack damage but most importantly is justice for all which basically gives you an additional ability or additional attack dealing 200 percent weapon damage. and basically what this looks like is your character will do this ability and then you'll get to do it again right right afterwards uh and that basically that secondary portion allows you to do more damage and of course if that person is low hp you're getting the 200 plus you're getting the additional 20 percent from uh summary of judgment uh we, i took the passive power through pain which is for one second after taking damage deal 35 percent extra damage so you really don't have to pump out a lot of strength stat in my opinion i don't plan on going that route I plan on putting, I want to get up to 300 and then get up to 200 if I can. 150, oh, excuse me, 150. 150 into strength and then 300 into constitution, primarily for the passives that we'll talk about a little later. And again, um, looking back at the abilities that I've chosen, which is Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball, another low cooldown ability. It says strike the ground around your target with a hammer dealing 120 weapon damage and flattening your enemy. and this is basically going to be your uh, your crowd control so this will knock your opponent down which then allows you to follow up with extra uh, abilities from your next ability which is mighty gavel so typically you want to soften up your opponent with an armor breaker to break their armor via rend and then looking at some of the other passives i took hardened steel it says it adds grit and grit basically gives you a little bit of cc immunity so let's say for example um if i didn't have that as you can see that little glow that goes on my character it kind of shows up like on my head and shoulders you should be able to see that right there 
So what that does is that it allows you to be uninterruptible when you're doing your heavy attacks. The reason being is because you're going to be utilizing heavy attacks primarily for the buff, gaining empower on heavy attacks, increasing attack damage by 20% for four seconds so that's going to give you a little bit of a follow-up so typically the way i like to use this in pvp if i can i will go with a heavy attack if it's like another melee player you might more than likely be able to get it off but if you can't and you're kind of like blocking setting up i'll go in for the stun and then go in for the heavy attack into a mighty gavel into a mighty gavel attack and that will typically do a lot of damage sending my opponent fleeing if you're fighting um like someone utilizing light armor if they're running like a mage build um, healers are a bit broken because of life staff but that's another topic for another story so the passives that i would recommend after basically in in, in this tree you're only going to take the first two because the third portion of the passive really really is not worth it 1.5 meters for an extra point there are other passives that you can take in my opinion that are just better so i would take the first two here and then take the first three here and then all the way down uh, the line over here and then grabbing the passive pain through uh, i would you can go this route but it's only on heavy attacks so it seems a little situational um, i definitely would take epitome of bunk as well as um exhaustive attacks maybe if you can squeeze it in but probably not on on the crowd crusher portion of the tree I would definitely take um i can do this all i can do this all day as well as outnumbered because you're a melee build you're probably gonna find yourselves in outnumbered excuse me in outnumbered situations and so you want as much uh damage reduction as possible it says increase damage absorption by 10 percent if surrounded by two or more enemies within three meters so if you're fighting you know multiple melee builds this comes very much in handy the next passive that i do recommend is acceleration over um, quick recovery the reason being is because quick recovery this is cooldowns are reduced by seven percent but it's only on heavy attacks and makes you can take acceleration um, even though acceleration has you have to have a debuff as it says, it says um, reduces warhammer cooldowns by seven percent when using a light attacks against targets with an active debuff and that debuff is going to be lasting trauma and then you're going to grab um, concussive impact and i think i kind of showed let me see if i can pull it up over here yeah this is it so this is basically all the passives that i took right three points all the way down here power through pain um, hardened steel hammer time epitome of bunk outnumbered um, facil facilitate expedition concussive impact acceleration and i can do this all day um and I, I prefer the passives that are a little bit least more for mobility um facilitated expedition after hitting a target with an active debuff says gain haste right this is going to be your debuff so every time you attack that person it's going to allow you to stay within range especially so that you can either come in for cc or light attacks heavy attacks etc it just allows you to keep keep up if you're on the warhammer bar there are other abilities here, but these are a little bit more relegated for like AOE crowd control. And this is more of like you're basically the heavy armored DPS versus being the heavy armored crowd control um, crowd control build. Now, the other item that I paired this with is primarily the hatchet. Um, I was using before I tried using the spear and the spear works well as well. But what was lacking for me was... A little bit of mobility i wanted more mobility so i went the route of the hatchet primarily for berserker is going to give you and i really don't use a lot of damage uh, damage on berserker on um on the hatchet bar it's primarily there for utility so i use it there for healing over time again which is one of the reasons why i said you want to put a lot of points into hp because you're really going to benefit from when you flip over let's say you're taking a lot of damage you can flip over into hatchet and now you've got berserker berserker will heal you for 30 percent of your hp so every four seconds you're going to get a seven and a half percent hp um as a basically like a heal over time up to 30 percent of your max hp so if you have a lot of hp you're then of course benefiting it allows you to stay in the fight 
for longer periods of times and again because a lot of the bonus damage is going to come from power through the pain as well as um what's it called as well as hammer time which so you're going to get 20 percent extra damage when you land a heavy attack plus as you're being hit you're going to be able to keep up that buff um it's a one second buff but if you're fighting multiple opponents then you've got the ability of outnumbered plus you're getting damage bonuses from power through the pain and then you get also added damage reduction um, through the secondary portion of Heart and Steel, which it says grants a 20% damage reduction while the heavy attack grit is active. So when you see that little flash there, it's during that period of time that you gain 20% damage reduction. Also, um, where is it? On a successful knockdown, you gain Fortify, granting an additional 20% damage reduction for four seconds so there's a lot of damage reduction and damage um, increases in this particular tree which is one of the reasons why uh, i felt i didn't especially because you've got basically an execute in mighty gavel that i really don't think i'll need that much that many points into strength i think as long as i can hit 300 and put 150 i would be fine and if possible i want to see if i can eke out 50 depending on the builder i've seen some of the builders where i can't actually get that many points but i'm not quite sure but if i couldn't put the 50 here i'm fine for the extra critical um i would just put all the points primarily into uh hp and then work all my extra points into strength i just want to finish up here so like i said the other ability that i really like is feral rush primarily i switch over to this bar when you've hit somebody with a mighty gavel it typically does a lot of hp damage and so typically because you're kind of like this big clunky sort of individual you don't have a gap closer you don't have access to you know on demand mobility and a lot of people use light armor they start roll dodging and they start running in a different direction and so that's one of the reasons why i liked using the hatchet and utilizing feral rush because once your opponent once your opponent thinks of running away um you can basically dash to them and if their point if their back is towards you crippling strikes will kick in which is if feral rush hits a target in the back it causes a root immobilizing the targets for two seconds so not only do you have a lot of hp regen as well as the removal of crowd control effects from berserking purge but then you have the ability to catch up to fling opponents because you gain extra mobility on demand from um, on the hunt, which increases your mobility by 20%. If you can land, um, crippling strikes will then kick in, which will root your target. And then sometimes what I'll do is, is while I'm in the middle of a fight, I'll use social distancing. Originally, I was using infected throw, but I find social distancing might be better because of the passive... Um, slow that's attached to it there aren't a lot of slows in the games and so if you're playing a um a build that does maybe doesn't have a gap closer like the axe then stay back works really well primarily if you're using the hatchet you might use this to disengage but i actually use this especially if you're fighting other melee builds to actually engage to set up a heavy attack the reason being is because throw an axe forward says throws an axe forward and dodge backwards dealing 130% weapon damage and slowing the target by 15 seconds. If that opponent, and if you take stay back, increases the movement speed reduction by to 25%, and of course the other point is um, deals increased damage. Uh, excuse me, it gives you um, mobility. So it says player movement and speed increased to 30% for three seconds if the ability uh, attacks a target with a debuff. And that's basically. The route if the point but what i really wanted this for was for the slow the reason that it's good is because let's say like you've used all of your abilities on your front bar you can quickly switch over if you perceive that your opponent is going to run away then you quickly hit f which will throw you back into an r into basically feral rush so it'll hit your opponent move you back that opponent might think of fleeing or if they're coming towards you then you can re-engage with feral rush or save feral rush for when that opponent is fleeing and then just immediately flip over to your front bar set up for a heavy attack into a stun and that's basically how i would utilize that combo 
that's basically how I would utilize that combo. Now, for this particular build, I do recommend running heavy armor because we do have stuns and slows. And as you can see, it says, um, while wearing heavy armor, your dodge is a slow sidestep. Your block stability is increased by 15% and crowd control debuffs you apply last 20% longer, which would include um, CCs as well as slows and roots. So that's why I went that route because we've got one crowd control ability here from the stun here. And then, of course, you have another one that's on your hatchet from crippling strikes as well as from stay back so it gives you a lot of opportunity to basically maximize um, the utilization of heavy armor especially because you're going to be able to take a lot more damage so your damage mitigation is going to be higher but then in talks of the attributes 50 points gives all consumables um hit you basically consumables heal you for 20 percent more most people are taking 50 points um just for the consumables but it also increases your health by 10 percent of your physical armor since basically we're going to be utilizing heavy armor um the increase in health is going to be beneficial for the hatchet because the hatchet heals you based off of your max hp so going 100 into uh, constitution gives you an additional 10% HP of your physical armor three uh, you gain 10% critical reduction which will reduce the spike damage that you'll take and then of course increases your armor by 20% which benefits this passage which benefits your HP which benefits your healing so you can see that it synergizes very well um, the Next passive is 80% damage reduction when full HP. It does have a large cooldown, so that's good. So if you get opened on and you don't see your opponent coming out, you gain 80% damage reduction on the amount of damage that you take, which is great. And then, of course, the last point, which is 20% plus 20% durations to slows, uh, stuns, and as well as root spells. And so I like this one because... Um, like I said, from the stuns from Warhammer, as well as the root from the hatchet, you're going to get a, an additional 20%. So that root from crippling strikes, that's two seconds. Now, because you're in heavy armor, you gain an additional 20%. And because you have 300 points into constitution, you gain another 20%. So that's 40% increase in crippling strikes, which turns a two second root into a 2.4 second root and of course any cc's that you utilize if it's a one second or a two second cc it will of course increase those cc's to 2.246 which is a lot of time which is one of the reasons why i decided to switch over from infected throw originally i was using it for uh originally i was using it for the debuff for the hp recovery but the longer on this particular build that you can force your opponent to stand still or the longer you can get that person to stay cc'd on the ground the more damage you'll be able to do than just a situational um healing mitigation especially because i've tried it on healers and healing the, the, the healing staff is just broken even with the 30 percent reduction it's just not enough they can just literally sit in the debuff and i was fighting someone the other day um i think it was 34 that person was 41 and i was dealing a lot of damage but even when the person is stunned on the ground and i'm beating them down i can only get them to about half hp and it's just not um it just seems something that needs to be adjusted it needs to be definitely adjusted in the game moving forward and hopefully in terms of um the points, like I said, I, in terms of the armor perks, let's go over here. So later on, you'll be able to 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 slot like different items. What I would go for, which would be critical reduction, magic reduction, as well as um, anything that will give you that I saw. There was like a necklace. It was like a strength necklace It's for endgame that gives you like half a percent of your hp every second and i would definitely take that so i would take anything that offers me critical reduction anything that offers um like hp oh based off of your damage and that's it. in terms of in terms of the points anything that's going to get you to the 150 strength 300 con and perhaps 50 decks 
that's basically the route that I would go um, for this particular build. And cooldown's not really going to be needed because the abilities, I mean, 15 seconds, um, you're probably going to have something that, that innately, 20 seconds on Mighty Gavel, um, Wrecking Blow, 15 seconds, not a lot of time. By the time you kind of flip over to here, do a little damage, pop your skills, come back over here, you're more than likely going to be off of cooldown, so I really don't feel the need to have anything that has CDR. If it's free and you can get it, why not? But what I would primarily go for would be more damage reduction. Anything that will add to slows and roots or stuns. Anything that will add to the durations like that. And basically mage damage. Mage is at end game. I hear do a lot of damage. And since you're slow to catch up to them, you know, to time to try to get into CC, you're going to have a hard time probably catching up to them. So you're going to eat a lot of damage. So anything that will mitigate, especially mage damage, I would definitely go for anyway. I'm going to leave that here. Hopefully, uh, I'll get to do some gameplay later on. I'm just sitting here in a hotel, basically utilizing the shitty internet that they have here. But anyway, hopefully, that gives you a good idea. If you're looking to run this type of build, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if you have any tips and tricks. If you're further on than I am, feel free to leave that down in the comment section. But this is more or less the route that I was theorycrafting uh, for my particular build. Feel free to like, comment, and of course, subscribe, and I'll check you next time.